I just want to start this video off with a quick public service announcement. The Tor browser bundle did not get hacked this past weekend. The Tor devs did not get compromised and forced to push out a backdoored update to the Tor browser. Everything's fine, and if your antivirus is saying that the Tor browser is a virus, you can just ignore that and put an exception to it. Uh, this past weekend, a bunch of Windows users, I think it was, well, definitely Windows 11 users and possibly Windows 10 users, uh, were saying that Windows Defender was flagging Tor.exe as malware, but if we take a look at the Tor forum, it tells us that Tor Browser 12.5.6 is no longer flagged by Windows Defender as malware. So it was just a false positive, okay? Nothing to worry about. The CIA didn't compromise Tor, not this time. Um, and you know, in the future, if you're ever concerned about something like that, if your antivirus is saying that Tor or some other free and open source application is malware, it's really easy to verify for yourself if something fishy is going on. Uh, so with Tor, they actually host uh, their own GitLab and they also have an Onion site available for it as well. And you can go and download the Tor browser for yourself or actually before you download it, um, you could do an audit of the Tor browser of the new changes by just clicking on them. And here you can see whatever has been changed to every specific file for that um, git commit. And as long as you know what you're looking at, I mean, you don't really have to be like an expert software developer um, to audit a, um, a, a program in a git repository like this because it highlights all the changes. It makes it really easy to look at. I mean, you need to have some level of uh, software knowledge for that specific language. But if, uh, you know, if something real fishy is going on, like if it's emailing save passwords off to NSA.gov, that's going to stick out like a sore thumb. So yeah, you can audit this for yourself. You can build it for yourself and verify that everything is working properly. And that way you don't have to be uh, paranoid about Windows Defender giving you false positives. Uh, but anyway, Let's get into this because this is going to be good. So this past weekend, uh, someone emailed me about this video saying that they saw uh, this thing on Sean Ryan's clips where Eric Prince, that's this guy here, um, former Navy SEAL founder of Blackwater and, you know, <laughs> were, rubbed elbows with uh, several other government agencies that glow oh so bright. He's developing a smartphone uh, along with the guy that developed the Pegasus spyware that was used by Mossad and several other glowing agencies to compromise people's smartphones. And it was a no-click vulnerability that it was taken advantage of, I believe, on both Android and iOS. So it was the situation where if you received this malware, like if somebody purchased it from, uh, I think it was NSO Group was the company that developed it. And then, you know, they contract with uh, Interpol, they contract with Mossad and other government agencies primarily. And then they use it to de-anonymize people or track people, take over their phones. If somebody was targeting you with this it, and you just received it, it was game over until Apple and Google or whatever other operating systems were able to put mitigations in place. Uh, so yeah, we're gonna we're gonna take a look at this because um, I've got a feeling and the person who emailed me said this as well that it reminds them a whole lot of uh, the Freedom Phone and possibly even the Anom Phone, which was this backdoored honeypot phone. Uh, I think it might have been originally created by the Australian Federal Police, but they, along with Interpol and several other, you know, international crime stopping agencies, used it to actually catch various gangs that, you know, were using these phones to try to have secure comms for their day to day activities. So let's when take a look. Zuckerberg at this. paid twenty billion dollars in WhatsApp. And for the next two um, weeks, actually, she was getting... Let's, let's go forward to, I think, like two minutes and some change. A, a couple of buddies of mine, because we had a, a project we were working on, a cyber forensic thing. And I said, let's pivot. Let's, we need to do a phone. Now, here we go. An independent phone platform that is not subject to the, to the whims of Google and Apple. 
Now, here's one thing I'm, I'm going to say. I might be getting ahead of myself, but he talks about an independent film platform here. And it's, it's not as independent as you might think because it's actually based on Android. <laughs> so it's not like he's creating a whole new operating system here. And so, um, if you've ever heard of Pegasus, I have not. Um, it's an offensive cyber virus used for hacking phones. Okay. The guy that developed that is our CTO. Trust me, man. Trust trust my phone. The guy that figured out how to hack every other phone out there is developing this, and it's totally not a honeypot. But he did it. Not to be offensive, he did it as a way for a phone company to do remote phone service. They send you a text, they click on it, fix your phone, and then leave. When he became offensive, he left and he went and built a very secure phone, which is still used by, uh, by governments today. And then he went to build uh, the phone that controls most of the world's pacemakers. You can imagine, you don't want a phone that you can hack um, if you're going to run a pacemaker with it. Yeah, no kidding. So... Uh, we'll deliver the first 500 units next month. It's our hardware. It's Android based, but it's all our code. Yeah, so it is Android based, which again, there's nothing wrong with that. Um, but he probably should have used better uh, language, use better language in general when talking about this. Um, so yeah, I mean, Android is open source and there are de-Googled Android ROMs like Calyx OS. Um, you can use... Lineage OS, they have an option to do it with Google's stuff in there and without Google stuff. And there's also Graphene OS. Uh, and then you can also just compile Android yourself since it is open source and just take out the stuff that you don't want to basically have your own version of Android OS. Our phone, not made in China. Supply chain not coming from China. That's another thing too, where he, where you know he says not made in China and supply chain um, not coming from China. I I doubt that none of the parts or electronics of this phone are going to come from China. But anyway, with our operating system, with our we'll, own we'll look at store, that when the phone actually comes out. Antivirus, VPN, and secure messenger. Okay, so he's got his own store, his own VPN, his own messenger, his own antivirus. Okay. Other options for this do exist. I mean, a VPN and antivirus, we'll just throw that out because nobody cares about that. But uh, as far as having your own store, your own independent store on a um, smartphone platform goes, with Android, that is an option. You can download APKs from websites and install them for you know any software developer out there that wants to build something for Android, but for whatever reason, they can't get in the Google Play Store. Or you could also put it through F-Droid as long as it complies with their terms and conditions. It has to be free and open source, and it can't be an application that spies on you. And look, if you're 16 years old and you posted what you had for breakfast on, on Instagram, it's probably not for you. Yeah, so it's, it, that makes me think it's, it's probably going to be set up more like Graphene OS. But if you're an adult just have that cares about um, all the Google uh, stuff from where you from go it. is your business... And uh, it's not to be your your data is not to be traded on uh, with everyone. Uh, that's something to think about. So we'll sell the phone for just under a thousand bucks, comparable in speed, storage, camera quality to the highest end of what the other guys sell. But our operating system does not contain any of those hooks. So so far. This actually sounds like it would be a pretty awesome phone, right? I mean, it sounds like it could be um, sort of like a graphene OS phone. I mean, that's a Google Pixel, so for under $1,000 um, and just installing some free software, I mean, maybe someone would charge you 50 or 100 bucks for that. Uh, you can get a phone that's comparable to this. For harvesting and selling your data. So it's a proprietary phone and hardware. Correct. Oh no! Whoa! Whoa! Hold on! Whoa! It's 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 a proprietary phone and hardware. Okay, proprietary hardware. Uh, that's forgivable, right? I don't think there's any Risk V phones out there, um, Risk V phones. But proprietary software. Okay, so this guy took Android, which is open source, and he added a bunch of 
a bunch of trust me bro software. Tr trust me, created Blackwater, ex Navy SEAL, hangs out with Glow Boys on a regular basis, hired the Pegasus software bro. Trust me bro. <laughs> he introduced a whole lot of proprietary trust me bro software to keep you secure into Android. So it's, it's in my book, it's less reliable than just taking Android and de-Googling it automatically, right? It's gonna be less reliable than um, Calyx OS. It's gonna be less reliable than Graphite OS. Operating system, hardware, all the rest is called Unplugged. It's called and, Unplugged. Um, uh, we're pretty excited about it. It also, uh, you know, it comes with, a, uh, with an actual kill switch. Because again, if you, if you turn this phone off, and you separate this, it separates the electronics from the battery so that off is off. So this is a pretty cool feature that is available in some phones like um, the Librem 5, I believe the Pine phone has this. There's a couple of phones out there uh, that run actual <laughs> operating systems, secure operating systems that you can trust because they're open source. Again, you can audit the software yourself just like you could with the Tor browser. Um, so th this really isn't anything new so far. Um, this is he. So far, he's taken stuff that already exists and made it so much worse in my book. Because um, again, all the hardware kill switches and stuff doesn't matter because while you're using it, it's absolutely proprietary. You can't be too sure about what it's doing. And um, uh, so you, you you buy it for just under a thousand dollars. The second year, you'll pay $10 a month, and we guarantee that none of your data is collected, stored, analyzed, or resold. If you still want to use other secure messaging apps like Signal... So here's a question. What happens if you don't pay your $10 a month? Right, because he says you pay $10 a month, and you know we guarantee that none of your stuff gets sold. So what, if I stop paying it, do you start selling it? Do you have the data? And, and you're basically holding it like ransom, you're holding it hostage for $10 a month? What's going on there? Or do you just deny, you know, all the privacy features and you re-enable Google stuff or you do something else silly? Signal or Threema or Telegram that's available in our app store. We even have... Is it necessary? Would it be necessary at all to have Signal other no. than contacts? Nope. No. Not, we have our own secure messenger. Um, it works uh, voice call, video call. Um, and ours, our, huh, our messenger generates a new encryption key every call. No. Nope. So, <laughs> generates a new encryption key every time. This, uh, that's again, not really a unique feature. Oh shit. Yes. Incredible. Um, yeah, it's, it's not even really a unique feature. So <clears throat> if we look at the specifications for signal, we see the same thing is accomplished with, um, double ratchet. And uh, you've got this thing called forward secrecy, where it's changing your keys that are exchanged between two parties for every session. Um, I don't know if that's necessarily every call or every message that you send with the, sig uh, with the signal protocol. But the point is, this kind of tech that he's talking about, where your, your keys are changing whenever you send messages, so that way if the key to one message gets compromised, it can't be used to unlock all the rest of your messages. This is already present in the Signal protocol, which is of course used in Signal, it's used in WhatsApp, it's used for um, secret chats in Facebook Messenger, as well as secret chats on Skype, and probably several other messengers that I'm not listing. And to be completely honest with you, I bet you he's using the same thing um, in, in his messenger. I, I I kind of doubt that this guy went ahead and rolled his own encryption algorithms and stuff like that. Um, now, he might have. Okay, it is possible. Um, that's what Telegram did, and I believe Telegram also has uh, forward secrecy and, and things in place to make it so that if the encryption key for one message gets compromised, it can't be used to unlock all the rest of your messages. So, I mean, at this point, I mean, I think he's lying at this point. <laughs> Uh, and, and because it's our app store, it's not Apple's, it's not Google's. We even have a lot of the apps that that are not allowed in those stores, like even an app for people that a dating app for people that are unvaccinated, for example. 
So, see, th- this is probably what, what makes me, and um, I, I think the person who emailed me, think that it's kind of like the Freedom Phone, right? Because he's, he's trying to play into that kind of, uh, you know, right-wing, wh- whatever um, field, you know, where he can sell stuff to people, right? Like Black Rifle Coffee, all these different brands that try to target right-wing audiences to sell stuff to them. And big tech, I mean, this is obviously something that a lot of right-wing audiences are very concerned about because they tend to be more left-leaning. Big tech tends to be much more left-leaning, and so they also tend to put a lot more censorship towards right-leaning views of stuff, um, and then also push it in some other ways. I mean, it's a weird thing. At the end of the day, big tech really just does whatever's the most profitable for them. Um, But yeah, I mean, he just kind of floats that idea out there like, oh yeah, man, we even have applications for the unvaxxed, you know? Get it today. Use use code uh, MAGA to save twenty percent. <laughs> right, because the, the 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 Silicon Valley wizards deem that was too controversial. So people that are in favor of free speech and uh, freedom of expression yeah. and thought should find uh, a, a residence here in uh, in what we're doing. Do you love free speech but hate free software? Buy my phone today. When you use the the messenger, I mean, it looks yep. good. The hardware of it looks good. So let's say, how do I say this? It's just software spooky as all hell. Does it have to be phone to phone? What's it called? Unplugged. Unplugged. Does it have to be unplugged phone to unplugged phone to get the secure? Our messenger also fits. We can you can put it on a iPhone or you can put it on any other Android right now. Those phones will still have an ad ID. So if you're using that phone, um. That data will still be tracked, but the but the phone call itself. So you can also <laughs> get the Spooky app standalone, right? Still proprietary on your Android phone or on your uh, iOS phone today. If you want to totally not be spied on by the Navy SEAL, Blackwater, Mossad, spyware guy and friends. Self will be secure, highly secure. So that phone to Very iPhone, secure. that's secure iPhone to iPhone, not or, what, uh, or look, whatever. You, you, WhatsApp, our to WhatsApp. unplugged messenger. Uh, we realize that um, a lot of people communicate through a lot of different means, and so we wanted our messenger to be um, to be compatible. We'll, we'll soon have a function where we can go from unplugged messenger and push it to a signal. Okay, if you're only using signal, uh, but unplugged to unplugged is far and away the most secure way you can communicate. We even have a dump feature that if someone says. Unlock that phone, and you can enter a code to unlock it. So that feature that he was talking about um, with saying that you can use the unplugged app to message people that are on other applications, that's actually really based. That's a feature that Signal used to have. You used to be able to use Signal even as a standalone SMS app to just talk to people that were using regular SMS, and you know you didn't necessarily, well, if it was regular SMS, I think it would just put like one check mark behind or by your text to say that it was sent, and then it would send two to say that it was encrypted. Um, very similar to what you get with WhatsApp. And I think WhatsApp still supports that feature where you can send messages to people on SMS. So I really don't know why Signal got rid of that feature. Um, you know, this guy's app supports that. So yeah, I really wish that there were more. Uh, open source apps that I can audit myself and I don't have to just rely on trust me bro that support these better end user features like this Um, and the feature for being able to put in a different code to erase your phone is also pretty cool but that's available on graphene os in fact I think that's even available on standard android os's so again it's it's not super impressive or you can enter another code which wipes it it wipes it a hundred percent. Gone, baby, yeah, gone. But that's that's standard. Nice. Not that impressive. Nice. What? <clears throat> we had a question from the audience about the Patriot Act. I mean, it might be good if you have to set that up by default, or it gives you that option when you're setting up your phone by default, because it would encourage more people um, to have. Well, I guess it's not really a dead man switch, but a dead man code, you know, to erase all the info from your device. Um, in case of an emergency, but 
like I said, that's supported on so many phones these days. Okay. Can you describe what the Patriot Act is? I think the Patriot Act was a well-intentioned, but turns out awful. Okay, so now they're just talking about the Patriot Act. So we're, we're kind of um, past the point of the phone, I think. Um, and then we're just going to take a look at the phone's website itself. Pre-order today. Privacy designed to protect and serve you. Libert OS. And I, look, I tried looking into Libert OS to try to find, like, a GitLab or, or anything from that. I can't find it. Um, like you said, it's based on Android. So we know that, but he just he just took the Android OS and just bolted on a bunch of spooky shit, proprietary shit. Um, UP Suite, so yeah, you can download this now for um, Android and uh, iOS. And the specs of the phone are actually really cool. I mean, this is one of the things that I do like um, about this phone, and, and I wish that more other more private phones uh, would evolve this. Like, I think this is my main criticism of the Pine phone as well, which is that they don't have modern phone specification. So going through this capacity, it has an SD card. That's amazing. I mean, the Pine phone has an SD card as well. Um, RAM is eight gigs of LPDDR4. So that is an older standard of RAM. The Pixel 7 has uh, D, uh, DDR5 RAM. Not really a huge deal, but just figured I'd point that out. Um, the display, I mean, it's not a super crazy 4K display, so I actually kind of like that. You know, you save a little bit of power that way. Um, SIM card, dual SIM, that's fine. Octa-core processor, and it's actually an ARM-based processor, so that's interesting. Um, I guess maybe that's a little bit more private than um, like Qualcomm or uh, what is it, the Google Tensor? You know, Google makes their own their own chip. So, I mean, like, if you're really, really paranoid about Google putting in a hardware-based backdoor, then I get not using their hardware. But you can still install these open source, private uh, Android-based operating systems, which I can almost guarantee, I mean, I guess we'll see once this comes out. I mean, he said it's coming out next month and that um, Sean Ryan clip is like only a couple days old. Um, I guess we're going to see what kind of actual mitigations are in Libert OS because I don't think they really break it down like they do on Graphene OS, but I guarantee you it's it's not going to be much different. Um, rear camera's really good, you know. Um, front camera's really good too. I mean, probably m way higher amount of megapixels than what you really need for the size of a smartphone sensor. But anyway, uh, yeah, it's got really good hardware specifications. It's just these um, this proprietary software is not something that you should be trusting. So let's see. Um, I think it was the FAQ. It's, uh, yeah, how can I trust you? So they've hired independent auditors to conduct periodic penetration tests on the platform security. So. I mean, look, here's the thing, right? That's all well and good. But what is the logic behind keeping it closed source? The only thing I can think of where, you know, there would be some business logic to this, maybe, is you actually figured out mitigations for the Android operating system that you just don't want to share, right? You got this secret sauce that you don't want to give people. That's the only reason to set it up this way, um that, you know, isn't completely evil, right? Other than just trying to lock people in to a proprietary operating system so that you could control them more, you know, like what I was alluding to earlier where they hold your data hostage for $10 a month. Just make it open source. That way I don't have to listen to what SciSec, I don't care what SciSec says. I want to look at the code myself. Um, let's see, what am I paying for? And why do you charge for your solution? Yeah, so, you know, here, they tell you, you know, that whenever something is free, then you're the product. I mean, yeah, there's there's definitely some logic to that, but it's not necessarily the same case with free and open source software. And you can also donate. Well, with free and open source software, you can charge for it. I mean, I think you could like maybe just give people the source code 
Um, and then you don't necessarily have to give them the binaries. I mean, you would have to use a different license. I don't think you could necessarily GPL it, uh, or maybe there's a certain version of GPL that lets you do that, but you could basically charge people uh, to give them the binaries and let them verify them. You know, they could build them themselves. But um, anyway, this, this uh, logic doesn't necessarily apply to the world of free and open source software. Um, how does the phone keep my data secure? Yeah, so, you know, again, they just go on talking about how stuff is designed to monetize your data by default, which it is, but let's see, phone mitigates the above vulnerabilities but have an operating system that has no vendor design ecosystem. Yeah, so this is basically talking about de-Googling the phone. That's possible to do without libvert, libvert, whatever it's called, OS. Um, let me see. Anyway, I'll let you guys look through this for yourselves if you want. It's unplugged.com forward slash FAQ. And yeah, unplugged phone, UP phone. This isn't something that I would trust. I mean, it's the fact that it's proprietary. Okay, I know um, this guy's logic is probably that it's security through obscurity or, or, you know, he's one of these guys that thinks, oh, no, anyone can see the code. Therefore, it's more vulnerable. That's not the case. OK, the, the only way that something like that really makes sense to keep your tools proprietary and for you as an end user to trust proprietary tools would be if you were working for. Apple or Google or Microsoft, and they're telling you to use their proprietary tools for your work at the company. Okay, that would be the only time that it really makes sense to trust that proprietary software because obviously Microsoft is not going to purposefully try to introduce anything that, you know, would, well, they might introduce stuff to make you less productive, but they're not going to necessarily introduce anything that's going to make it harder for you to do your work or compromise your ability to do the work in any way because that would be them just shooting themselves in the foot. But trusting Microsoft or trusting Apple, trusting any of these big tech companies uh, to give you a device or to give you software that you can use to do your work that isn't backdoored in some way or doesn't have ads or trackers embedded into it or something to take your data and be able to monetize it because that's uh, the whole business model of these companies, that's not something that you can trust. With free and open source software, you don't have to trust anything. You can verify it for yourself. So Unplugged is in the exact same boat as big tech because they're just asking you to trust them. And again, the background of these guys, he admits to you that his CTO is the guy that developed Pegasus software uh, or the Pegasus spyware, which granted, um, I don't think that guy necessarily worked for Mossad or any of these three letter agencies directly, but they were his customers. They, they used his software, they paid him lots of money, lots of your money, since of course these are tax funded uh, government operations, to use this spyware against people that they were targeting, people that they wanted to track and de-anonymize. So, yeah, I would not trust this phone with a 10 foot pole, but let me know what you guys think about it in the comments section below. Follow me on Odyssey and you can get the come and find it shirt on base.win 10% discounts when you use XMR, even when XMR has higher prices, you know, during its bull run, I think it got up to $150 this morning and the 10% discount was still in place. See, that's the beauty of base.win. You can use your cryptocurrencies to buy stuff on there, even when they're having a bull run. That way you can gain massive savings if you bought that stuff during the last bear market. But that's it for this video, guys. Have a great day.